Well, this year even the best of them died. My trusty 3.8 didn't start when I tried it just a few moments ago, but I fixed it now. Well, this reports about all the problems I've had so far this year that I've repaired in my shitty car report. My Cheviac is running today, but only on the bottle. Well, because <laughs> the fuel lines have rusted out, but that's not the reason why it wouldn't start. Water did run down the header, go inside one port on the exhaust, and fill up one cylinder with water. To help prevent that from happening in the future, I've got two pails plus two metal caps underneath. Now that the hood's open, I can show you what happened. As you look down the manifold stack, oh, right there, a hole corroded right where the flange attaches to the bevel edge there. So water just runs down the tube when it's raining, trickled in there, and the third cylinder back was full of water. So when I pulled the plugs out of this car and cranked it, that's the only one that just poured out. So she ain't seized and she's fine. But I am not going to lay in that slop and change the fuel lines. I'll wait till I bring my tractor back and do it. Now back to this beast. Common problem in a snowy country. The coil pack assembly on your 3.8 or 3.3, whatever, looks just the same. Well, there's six screws that hold it down. And there's a little module, a computer underneath that, that grounds out to a metal plate. Well, corrosion happens in between the two plates, especially when there's a drift underneath the hood when it's buried in snow, and you get no spark. So it takes about 15 minutes to fix, remove all the screws, take the plates off, and sand or grind them. She's all better now. I started the Buick Halfmaster and nothing happened. It was just perfect. Sweet. And we all know that thing's running now. It was just a choke problem. The diving board van is still dead in the water. I mean dead out of the water because the distributor went bad because I forgot and left the key on when I sunk it in the lake. And the distributor happens to be seized in the hole in the engine and I haven't been able to get it out yet, even though I do have spares. Well, I checked out this thing's 3 liter starter motor. And the starter motor's fine. Just the main feed wire that runs down to it from the solenoid has corroded off the starter motor. But it's too yucky to crawl underneath that mud too, so I'll wait till the tractor comes back to the farm. I'll pick it up and fix it. Today is the warmest day of 2009. It's uh, March 6th or 7th or something like that, Friday, and it's plus 15 Celsius, and which means about 60 Fahrenheit. Sweet. Wasn't even wearing a coat a few moments ago until the sun went behind all those shitty clouds. Next, the half car is running perfect now too. Same problem as that Buick 3.8. I removed the rad fan, Darcy B, to get access to it's spark coil assembly, and it's also got that little module computer on aluminum plate too, which attaches to the block with three screws. Well, because this thing had a big drift of snow under the hood, same thing happened. Corrosion between the two plates, no ground on the plate, no spark. I already had her started, and she's running perfect. Sweet. And the venerable Ford that couldn't get out in the deep snow. There was a really good explanation for that too. Actually, two explanations. Here's the first one. Uh, the back wheel's in the air. Literally. When I backed up, I backed up just a little bit too fast, rolled over my extra fuel tank, and left her suspended, unknowing. And then it snowed after, so I never knew. Crunch! Well, the reason why the four-wheel drive shifter wouldn't work because it's working beautiful now was the transfer case underneath was half full of water yeah all the lake crossings I did and parked in the middle and stuff like that I guess it leaked into the vent hole so when it was half full of water it was ice and that froze the mechanism inside so the lever couldn't move and engage it now I could probably just start her up the front wheels and be in four-wheel drive and that'll pull the back ones right off their lofty high position. Notice our redneck snowmobile sled. This was a lot of fun. You tied this a rope tied to it, you tie it to the back of your snowmobile and you sit in it. It's just an upside down car hood with a seat welded to it and it's amazingly fun. 
I did make some videos of it, but since it was minus 15 to 20 Celsius out, they all got screwed up and I couldn't load them on YouTube. My cameras hate the cold. And more good news. I think the dump truck will start all by itself. Now that it's warmer out, like I just said, 15 Celsius, the fuel pump is working. I reconnected the hoses back up so it's not going to run off the bottle now. I did check inside the carburetor and there is fuel when I twist the throttle. Haven't tried to start it yet. Got the battery in and the best news of all, I got the beeper. It doesn't beep anymore. Watch. Nothing. This thing just plugged into the fuse box. It's that simple. Cool. Piece of crap. Now, let's go see if she fires up all by herself. The key is actually on. It's hard to believe. No beep beep. Ugh. Choke is on. Here we go. Yes! <laughs> and this is no bullshit. It started that fast all by itself. This is the first time I tried it since last time. Cool. That's a big block for you, Chevy. <laughs> that was one. Oh well. Proves we got lots of potential this year. Cause Jen's coming back. I was talking to her yesterday. She came over for a visit. Sweet. So now I'm going to try just one battery since it's not a very cold day. See if that Ford will start and drive off its predicament. All set. Let's see what's going to happen. How long do I have to wait? Uh, one battery just ain't gonna do it. Too bad. Okay, I got two batteries in it now, but they're not that great. Wait again. Try one more cycle. Sounds potential. Yes. Sweet. Gotta love your Ford truck. No exhaust. <coughs> I hate the smell of unburnt diesel in the morning. So let's see if she'll move. <clears throat> ah, what's she in? Four 
more low. Alrighty. And we're out. Some idiot parked a bus in the way and half a car. Now we're stuck. Oh man. Nowhere to go. Oh well, it's too muddy to go driving anyways. Snow's just starting to melt. Frost is coming out of the ground. It's totally disgusting. Shut her down. And we didn't only move only like three feet. I've been busy today too. Remember the handle didn't work on this typical van? They never seem to work on the driver's side. They're always busted. Well, I just cut it out with my cutting wheel grinder. Now you just reach your finger inside, push. <laughs> Works as good as brand new door handle. Doesn't cost a penny. Gotta love it. Same problem at the back. Tried cutting out the lock assembly. That didn't help me. Tried cutting out where the license plate was. Hell, there's no latch in one of these cars like a regular van. Cut even over there. Still no latch. Oh well. Cut over here. Find a latch. Works great. Still won't open. And another latch. Two latches? What's the problem? Anyways, now the tailgate opens. More room for beer and wood. Whatever else. <laughs>